morning guys, you two people world. Got going on. Driving back to work. 174,000, so it'll be 175,000 something miles. We'll be on the beast. By the time I get to Vegas. Yeah, I mean, yeah probably. Anyway. Driving to work. 9.51. In the morning, 10 o'clock-ish. Anyway. Um, yeah, didn't really do a whole lot. These days off. This is uh, Interstate 15. Highway 15. Goes all the way to Salt Lake. Not as far as I'm going, I'm just going north of Vegas. Get out of Vegas and then head up north. Keep going the uh, whatever west, northwest, and then northeast. Heading out to Wendover, Wendover, Utah slash Wendover, Nevada, right there at the border. Anyway, yeah, I really didn't do much uh, yesterday or maybe the day before. Today is Monday. So I think it was Saturday. Ended up uh, looking at retard. Anyway, I don't know what this dumb dumb was looking at. It's giving me a mean old stare. But anyway, um, yeah. So uh, Saturday ended up taking the front axle off of the kids' first gen four-wheel drive truck and uh, took took the shims out because I have to remove the caster um, this way I guess because right now the drive shaft is like this and I had to bring the bring it down so anyway um yeah so I did that it wasn't too bad didn't fight me too much, but the way I have to lift the truck is kind of sketchy. I have to stick a 4x8 in the frame up and then jack it up. The jack would roll and shoot the wood out, but whatever. I only did it a couple times. Um, but yeah, so got that. Didn't go for a test drive. I was pretty much just pooped just pooped from working two schedules uh, basically worked I don't know 15 days I guess you could say straight um, but one day like this traveling so I worked eight days on the old group and then traveled out which was a day and then worked the other seven days out there with the other group. And now I'm probably going to do it again because I don't like that group. So I put some put some bids in to uh, catch a different job because the manager... Do some sketchy stuff, so and I don't feel like doing sketchy stuff at work. So I'm gonna bid out, put my bids in, and uh, yeah, pretty much just uh, hopefully I'll catch another job. I'm either going back to my old group because they're coming down, they went to Portland, but the project in Portland's not ready, so they're coming down south about I don't know, 100. 20 miles south south uh, east I guess so they're about 6 hours away from where I'm working right now so if I catch that job I'll work this week till Tuesday then he'll release me Tuesday Tuesday night I'll drive up there and then Wednesday probably start with those guys and uh, hopefully all that will work out if not, there's another job up available on 
the group that's working right now in the same area. So if I catch that job, then I'll just stay there. And uh, yeah, I'll just work straight through, 16 days straight. Um, and then I put in a couple other jobs in different places like uh, Elko, Nevada. No comment. Anyway, um, yeah, so in Elko, Nevada, which is about 100 miles from where I'm working right now. So if I catch that, then I'll just have to drive 100 miles and go to work. And I know those guys pretty good. So it'll be a pretty smooth transition. Um, the only job that won't be a smooth transition is I put in two jobs for in Sparks, Nevada, where my sister lives. So I could probably call her and be like, hey, I'll come stay with you. And then uh, I'll just probably fly out of Reno, fly home, back and forth, and uh, do all that. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll know on uh, Wednesday for sure. But yeah, so um, I did those bushings or whatever, little collars for the fortune on the steering shaft. I saw that video from, uh, I can't remember, EFM or EMF, sorry, EMF, because the sticker kind of looks like an FMF sticker, but it's an EMF. Anyway, uh, put those in. I drove the truck to the hardware store which is uh, down the street. And uh, steering is a lot firmer, a lot tighter. It's kind of weird. And uh, I guess it's just a steering dampener, basically. So it's now the steering wheel is more firm. Like you can feel the bumps. You hit a bump and you hit a bump. So whatever it is what it is, but at least the steering is a lot tighter. And uh, yeah, so I went to the hardware store because I had to buy some fittings, some adapters. So now I have a retractable hose. I think I mentioned it in a video. So I basically took an airline hose, retractable air hose, and uh, bought some fittings. And now that's my uh, water hose. So now I can just wind it up. You can pull it and wind it up, just like my air hose. And it's self-contained and it has its own little spiral thing that you know guides it in there and winds it up smooth so you don't have to like you know worry about lining it up and lining it up and or having like a bunch up in one section so it automatically goes and lines the hose up but anyway I got that pressure is not the greatest uh, but that's okay I don't need crazy pressure because if I want crazy pressure I'll hook up a pressure washer uh, yeah, so did that and then tightened up the kids shifter because the shifter on those NV 4500 the 96 to 98 I believe or maybe I believe it's 96 to 98 um, that steering if you have the round top on the shifter fork housing um, with the square shifter little selector thing that goes in and a spring and everything if you have one of those the shifter that goes the shifter handle that goes on there really sucks there's a lot of play in those unless they're brand new so I ended up drilling and tapping some holes on the side because um, there's a metal sleeve in there but you couldn't drill through it because it's like some hardened stainless steel or something I don't even know what it is anyway Man, I wish I could get one of these. These things are so cool. It's an inside joke for the wife. But anyway, um, I do want one of those, but not all crazy decked out. But anyway, so yeah, so I ended up tapping some holes into the shifter some, and put some bolts in there to tighten it. So now it's a lot more stiff. So it's not floppy. And uh, we didn't test drive it. So, 
and the kid thinks his transmission or something might be going out in his other first gen, so I kind of, I couldn't really tell under there because there's a lot of oil. Looks like the uh, transmission rear seal where the drive shaft goes in, looks like that seal's leaking. But I couldn't really tell because there was just dirt and uh, looked like transmission fluid everywhere. So I took some simple green and sprayed it everywhere underneath his truck. And uh, yeah, just hosed it all off. Hosed his engine, cleaned everything off because the valve covers were leaking. And I would put new gaskets on there or whatever a couple weeks ago. But anyway, so I did some stuff, but I really didn't do much. Um, I just couldn't tell where it was leaking. And then by the time that it dried, I was already ready for bed. So, you know, and I have a pressure washer attachment coming. It's on wheels so that you can pressure wash underneath cars. Because the Audi, it was really dirty and it had all that salt stuff on it. So I had to just hose down the underneath the car as best I could, which took forever. So that's why I ended up buying one of those. So this way I can just wheel it and spray it, do all that stuff, and then uh, with the pressure washer. And then if I have to do a transmission, I'll be doing that to the kid's truck. And I don't know what we're going to be doing for a transmission. I don't know if he wants to upgrade to a 47 re 47 rh or 48 re i don't know what he wants to do i don't know um i've already talked to him about it a long time ago and i basically told him that what i think he should do is buy a little car and then we should do kind of a bulletproof transmission in his truck because this truck's going to be down for a while because obviously I work a lot and I'm going to be doing all the work. So, anyway. That's about it. Anyway, sorry guys. Anyway, get off because the uh, we're having a refrigerator delivered today. Because whatever's wrong with our refrigerator, I'm assuming it's the door seals. Um, I ended up ordering a new refrigerator our electricity is really high because of the refrigerator because the thing will not turn off and uh, I don't think we can find door seals we looked I think we found it's a French door style mate tag refrigerator and I think we found one side or one door door seal but the other side was discontinued so I don't know it is what it is but 60 miles to Los Vegas. And believe me, I hate Las Vegas. Brake check area. That means you pass semi trucks and you can brake check on, especially the prime trucks. That's what that means. If you're ever in that spot, brake check area. So you can brake check all the semi trucks you want. Just a little FYI. Alright guys, uh, yeah, so I'm done. Didn't do much, but I did kind of do a lot, I guess. But Alright, we'll see you guys on the next video. Hopefully whenever I get back or get home. Um, we go for a drive in the kid's truck. In the four-wheel drive truck. And, uh, yeah, see if the caster fixed the problem. I'm gonna see if the kid wants to go for a drive. He's been kind of angry lately. I don't know, just PMSing or whatever his deal is. But, oh, yeah, anyway. And by the way, fuel was $6.15 by my house, which is why I didn't fuel up. So I'm gonna go, there's a fuel gas station somewhere around Vegas or outside of Vegas. It says it's five dollars and twenty cents, so I'm gonna save a dollar a gallon, and uh, hopefully I can make it there. It says I got 225 miles till empty, which this big old hill right here that I just went up ate up a lot of it. But 
I think it's only like 40 something miles outside of Vegas, so probably like another 100 miles. That should be good. Alright, guys, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. And thank you for subscribing. Comment. Do what you guys do. Keep being you. Don't be a pansy. Own up to your mistakes. If you screw up, you're human. Until we're all replaced by robots. Alright, later.